Today's lecture continues our series on the cranial nerves with cranial nerve number three. Cranial nerve number three is called the ocular motor nerve. Now, the ocular motor nerve originates from the anterior aspect of the midbrain. Now, it exits through the medial side of the cerebellar peduncles, or the interpeduncular fossa, and continues its course anteriorly where it goes through the cavernous sinus and then exits through the superior orbital fissure of the cranium. The ocular motor nerve is a general somatic motor type of nerve with some parasympathetic fibers. Its function is to move the eye as well as constrict the pupils and has accommodation for different amounts of light in our visual field. A result of a lesion to the ocular motor nerve can result in down and out gaze, ptosis, and dilated pupils, which we will go over momentarily. The muscles which are innervated by the ocular motor nerve include the superior rectus, medial rectus, inferior rectus, inferior oblique, levator palpebrae superioris, sphincter pupillae, and the ciliary muscle. As we look at this next diagram, we will be able to observe the course of the ocular motor nerve after it exits through the superior orbital fissure. So here we see at the superior orbital fissure, the ocular motor nerve continues and branches into a superior and inferior branch. The superior branch continues up and branches further into innervating the muscles of the levator palpebrae superioris and the superior rectus. Levator palpebrae superioris, as seen here in red on this diagram, functions to elevate the eyelid. And the superior rectus, seen here in purple, functions to tilt the eyeball in an upward gaze. Now the inferior branch has many different branchings here, including the medial rectus, which is seen here in pink, which functions to adduct the eye or rotate the eye towards your nose. The inferior rectus, which is seen here in blue, whose function is to tilt the eyeball in a downward gaze. Now here we have the nerve fibers reaching out into the ciliary ganglion. Now this is where the parasympathetic fibers of the ocular motor uh, course through and they delve into the short ciliary nerves. Now the short ciliary nerves go to the sphincter pupillae muscle as well as the ciliary muscle. The sphincter pupillae muscle inside of our pupils functions to constrict the pupil um, when there is enough light that causes a constriction necessary. And the ciliary muscle functions to either uh, tighten or relax the lens inside of our eye to accommodate for short or long distance vision. Now, continuing on all the way to the inferior oblique muscle, seen here in orange, functions to adduct the eye as well as tilt it in an upward gaze. And as you can see from this diagram, any of the muscles with a star next to it are innervated by cranial nerve 3. The other muscles will be discussed in a further cranial nerve lecture. Returning to this diagram, now that we have understood what each muscle of the ocular motor accomplishes, we'll be able to understand the results of each of its lesions. So the down and out gaze would result in all of the motor muscles losing their function and ability. So this would result in a down and out gaze because the only muscles which still have their motor capability would be the superior oblique and the lateral rectus muscle, which would cause uh, the eye to be abducted as well as turned in a downward gaze, hence a down and out gaze. Ptosis would result from a lesion that affects the levator palpebrae superioris, 
as seen over here, the patient would have difficulty elevating their eyelid. And a dilated pupil would result in the paralysis of the sphincter pupillae and ciliary muscles, seeing as the eye um, would lose its ability to constrict the pupil when there is a large amount of light in a person's visual field, so they would have a constant dilated pupil on presentation. And this is cranial nerve number three.